we've got about 14 minutes for questions before we go off to, to lunch. Um, but I want to start off just by um, asking, among all of these wonderful things that are going on, that are happening, what do you foresee as a threat or a challenge coming down the pike? What is it? What keeps you up at night thinking about where do we go next? I'll start with this. Um, what keeps me awake and keeps me annoyed, actually, is, is who's going to who's next? Who's stepping up? Who's going to keep First Fine going? Who's going to be doing other resource building and resource development? I mean, you know, I know these people. Every, every meeting, every conference I go to, here we are. Who's next? That, that makes me, I'm very concerned about that. And it, it, both, not only, not only locally, but I would also say um, professionally. I, I think it's, I, I really like that PLA has these new goals and literacy is prominent. I would like to see that across the profession and I'm, I'm, I'm afraid that I don't see that enough. And I'll add to that that, um, you know, we're talking, we've been around for 20 years. We're still saying the same thing we said 20 years ago. Not enough people know about it. Not enough libraries are doing it. We don't have enough staff, enough funds mm -hmm. to do it in the library. We, we, we have initiated a program here, but I don't know that we've come very far yet. I concur, actually. <laughs> I think they covered it well. <laughs> the transition to the Cowan County program. Rita's retiring in a couple years. What next? Well, and you, you referred to Rita, I think you said Rita said that what we do is revolutionary. And what is revolutionary changes with the political climate <coughs> as well. Questions from the audience. Where's our microphone person? Oh, here she is. Actually, I just want that website, Cindy. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. Yeah, I'll catch up with you later. And in fact, I'll put it like on a, a flip chart so everyone can copy it. Yes, in the back here. If you could please stand also, then we'd be able to catch you on camera. If the rest of us have to. <laughs> Fine. No problem. I was just wondering if you feel, since this is the same issues have been the same for about 20 years, if computers have kind of cut you off of the knees a bit. Having the, the influx of computers coming into the libraries, the focus, attention went that way rather than towards reading literacy. I, I very much agree with that. I mean, I think that, that we have become tech tech files. I don't know what we've become, but, but everything that we hear about, everything that we read about in professional literature, if you go to conference, there's just vendors galore. And they are really, I think, kind of determining our lives right now. And, and I think it's a real, real problem. I mean, I, what we were trying to do is, is, is make technology more inclusive. You know, I, I went to my boss at one point and I said, well, you know, you're, you're doing all these great tech projects for people who are at college level and have money. I want IT for special populations. And, and, I, and that's, that's unheard of in library land. And I, I think that's, that's a real challenge for us. I'm going to chime in. I don't think so. <laughs> I disagree. Oh, good. <laughs> I mean, I wish, you know, 20, 30 years ago when I was working in this, it was books that were our competition. I mean, people thought libraries were books. I'd, I think the whole arena of serving the underserved, we love to talk it. I don't know that a lot of us live it. And that's my take on it. Mm. If, it if it wasn't a computer, it'd be something else. Mm. That would be the competition. But. I'd add to that that um, as long as the technology remains our tool, it's a very valuable tool. It can be a hook to get our adult learners into the library. Like the Find It tool can be a wonderful library source for our adult learners. But when it starts, when the tail starts wagging a dog, when we're all about the technology rather yeah. than about um, yeah. reading, then I think we've lost our way yeah. a bit. Yeah. 
you know, Neil Postman in his book, The End of Education, talks about technology education and how there's so much of a focus on in our education on how to use the technology as opposed to how to think about the technology and to think about the implications. And so it just strikes me that even within our circle of thinking about library services and particularly library literacy services, perhaps we need to have that higher level kind of conversation mm -hmm. about what are the implications and, and how do we embed this in a way that makes sense and does create inclusive communities and creates opportunities. Thanks. Yes, up here. I, I don't really have a question as much as a, a comment about the fact that um, no matter, I mean, at this point in time, they haven't made technology such that you don't need to be able to read to actually use it, um, regardless of the fact of Vista or whatever's coming out and the graphical capability of it. You still have to know what the start menu means and, and some of the, those tools. Plus, once you get on it, you're reading, you know. Um, and so uh, the information literacy part of it is a very small part of what I would consider we were talking about earlier one of the speakers was about the continuum part of it is mm -hmm. that it's kind of like you know is it black white or gray it's kind of all the same part of an information literacy mm -hmm. thing and I'm, I'm finding that we're seeing um, and, and we do we have a lot of people who in the area where I am I'm in Buford County, uh, Buford County South Carolina which um, talk about the gambit of um, low and high income and a hugely uh, growing population. And uh, we're seeing more and more people coming in because they don't have the capabilities themselves. But then, you know, trying to figure out how to, is the filling out of the application mm -hmm. online mm -hmm. and that. I mean, this is a real thing. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, I don't see it as, you know, it's the technology thing that solve it. It is really a tool. I, to, to plug into that a little bit, I think you're right. And I think it is a tool, but I think that it needs that, that human interface yeah. to make it a tool, to make it a usable tool. And, and that means that we need to reallocate and rethink our human resources and, 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 and so that this is supported. And that, that's a challenge. I think you, you, you use the words medi mediation. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think it's very helpful that you brought some um, research to the table. I think that um, I, what I do is I write grants. I work for my friends in the library and I write grants and I find that the that the philanthropists out there are getting much more savvy and they want to see research-based information and so the articles that you brought and the, and the information that you all are providing anecdotal or um, or actually research-based is very important and um, it's a it's an education process we're in the we're in the education business and so if if, if they're interested in funding children's literacy, it's because we've gotten them interested in it. If we tie it to adult literacy, it's because we're going to get them interested in it. It's mm -hmm. because we're going to be giving them the 30,000 feet picture of how these pieces fit together. So I really appreciate your comments today. Thank you. And I would like to add that it would be nice if, if the library profession started doing some more research on, on all of this. Everything I've quoted is from, from other fields which is great. They do great research. But I think it would be nice if we stepped up and started doing our own. Um, did you have something? Yeah. I just wanted to get back to uh, your nightmares, the ones that you have wondering what comes next, who will, who will continue the work. And I'm lucky enough to be a literacy provider that is housed in a library. I'm a library employee. And I want to challenge everyone that is in the literacy field and the library field to remember how important it is to think about succession and sustainability. I hear a lot of people saying, oh, uh, I left and my program died, or there aren't enough people that are interested that, that are coming up with us. I think actually it's that person's fault that left it to die without making sure there was somebody there to keep up the work. And I think we have to think about that every day. And practicing that is difficult, I know, but I have to save time in my day to mentor people that are thinking about doing this and hoping that they'll be able to continue training people. 
uh, keeping them interested and only agreeing to mentor someone or do some work for someone if they're willing to promise to learn how to do it themselves. So just a challenge out there to everyone that remember the mentoring part of all of this so that we can continue. Good point. Any reflections? Thank you very much for your presentations. They are very, very enlightening. I am from a brand new program that one of the libraries in the, in the Santa Barbara County or the city of Santa Maria is beginning and talking about partnerships. We are a nonprofit who have been teaching literacy for 23 years and we just became part of an agreement with the library. And one of my questions is, and I have not heard any of this mentioned, and I'm concerned about it, is distance learning. When I think about technology, I think about distance learning, perhaps because I come from a country where technology is becoming such a tool to teach those people in rural areas that don't have the ability or the freedom to go to a library. So what do you know about that? And my question specifically is distance learning today in technology with the library. Uh, I, as I believe I mentioned, the Okaloosa Walton Community College actually has an online distance learning site that's, that they've purchased software and they've added a lot of ref, uh, other, riched it up with other stuff in their job related things. And, and the real challenge though is with the lowest students is you still need to have that personal interface. There, you need to have, you need to have both. But, um, and as I had mentioned, Calhoun County Library jumped on it. I mean, you know, they had, they had some staff that literacy was part of the jobs. We had other libraries that were getting this free software and not. Now, the software wasn't real friendly to the public library environment, and that's certainly a challenge that's changing, because this has been a while back, but. Well, and I was talking, the GED Illinois is a distance learning option. Um, we have, in our public libraries, that are involved in literacy mostly have learn a test and other support software. Distance education is such a, a, a wide field. Um, do we have any ESL distance education options? No, but do we have uh, software that you can access in the library to uh, learn another, to learn English? Yes, we do. So um, it, it kind of depends on what you're looking for. It exists, but maybe at a uh, beginning stage. I, um, I had the feeling that some people think that that separates the individual touch, that by being in a distance learning program, you don't have the one-on-one -on -one touch. I also think that that is not really true. It doesn't have to be that way. I, have yeah. kno I know about semi, uh, what we call semi-present uh, relationships, where a person is in the program and he or she comes to the library or whatever, and then you have that contact, you have assignments, and then you have follow-ups in person, and I think that that's when the technology really becomes a tool. I, I, I agree, I mean, it, it's an interesting field, and I think a lot of people are starting to develop it. There's a fellow in, in um, Portland, Oregon, his name is Steve Reeder, and he's done some research um, and where he found that 33% of, of people he whatever qualified as within adult ed need, prefer to study independently. And, and so that, that distance learning would be very helpful for them. And they are piloting, they've just written, submitted a, a grant to IMLS uh, to support this uh, application called LearnerWeb. And it gives a menu of choices of different type of learning. I want to study for the GED, I want to do ESL. How do you want to learn? I want to learn online, I want to find a tutor in my area, et cetera. And it, it's very developed and it's going to be really interesting. We're going to hopefully be a pilot site if, if it gets through the gates of IMLS. But, but it's some interesting stuff. It's a challenge in libraries because we have this, this, all these rules and regs and we are so good at rules and regulations <laughs> on how many minutes you can be at the computer mm -hmm. and all this kind of stuff no that really gets in the way. And I think it, that's a challenge to us across the board to think about application, technolo technology application in our libraries, who's it for and what can we do with it? I think Thank you. Point. 
There's one more issue about that, um, not for the adult learners, but for volunteer tutors and for literacy professionals, there is Verizon Literacy U, which is a distance education option for us. Mm -hmm. right. We had one more question right here. Yeah. I just wanted, to, I wondered if anyone here had used the programs available from, I think, a state of Kentucky PBS that's done in conjunction with the state and their, their Department of Education and PBS in Kentucky. And there are, there is a distance component there where you can purchase the licensing to visit that site online and have a local moderator who will actually monitor the class participation and things like that. And it does have a lot of different components, the civics component and everything else. I can't remember off the top of my head the, the initials of the PBS, but it's they- It's KET. KET, okay. Yeah. And now, the program's have any of called- you used those programs? Yeah, the program's and, called GED Connections. Okay. And it's actually broadcast on PBS. If you buy that license, there's right. a TV program that they broadcast, and it is accompanied by workbooks. And, uh, and, and they um, have the GED, but there also is an adult ed component that I is. think that yeah. they, you can participate well, online, and I haven't mm -hmm. actually When they call it GED it. Connections, it's because everyone walks in wanting their GED, right. no matter what level they're at. So yeah, that is an option for some states. It is an expensive option. Recently mm -hmm. in Illinois, some Rotary Clubs got together and bought that for some Central Illinois and it's currently going on um, and what we did at the State Library is make sure that all the libraries knew about it and had uh, the workbooks and um, a copy of the GED tapes which they're videotapes mm -hmm. DVDs now um, that GED learners not only could watch it on TV late at night like they schedule it they could also borrow that DVD and the workbook from the library and use it as a distance education option. Yeah, I think the optimal way to use that is through a state licensing but the more populous states I'm from Nevada we have such a small population the fee was not high but the more population you know it's based on per capita so mm -hmm. but it is an option for some locations that are looking for that type of service. Thank you. It is now 12.03. Um, before we depart, though, I just want to make one observation. I think it's so interesting that when the issue of distance education came up, most of the conversation was around delivering literacy instruction. And yet, just minutes earlier, we heard about the, the concern about developing leadership and having a transition plan. So let's think about the technology and how we begin to use that to, to tap into the expertise and the mentorship that's available, particularly in those sparsely populated states where you may not have leadership right there, um, right handy. Um, it's a way of providing support to someone who's starting a brand new program, for example, and may not have somebody right there in their community. So let's think about these things creatively. We will be back here at 2 o'clock promptly, and uh, we'll have a very busy afternoon. Thank you.